I introduced what I believe to be the first S-tier office chair, the Lumia, back in May of 2021 in a now popular best office chair tier list, but it wasn't really an office chair, yet. If you didn't watch the tier list video or you haven't read anything on the Lumia and you're still watching this video, let me tell you what it is. It's pretty simple actually, a steel case leap frame paired with a steel case Amia seat. Combined, you get the better adjustments of the leap with a more comfortable seat pad on the Amia. Now, I honestly had no idea what would happen next. You guys absolutely love the idea. The most upvoted and replied to comment on that tier list was hilarious. I swear to God, if Steelcase doesn't produce the Lumia until the end of this year, I'll have to call Elon Musk. But it got better. We actually had two people who work for Steelcase comment on the video as well. Joel Shears from the Asia Pacific region and Eric Anderson from the US operations. Now the best part about Eric Anderson commenting, he's technically a data scientist for Steelcase and helps make decisions based on data. Now I think the data shows with the volume of interest out there from you guys that Steelcase should make this chair and of course be a BTOD exclusive. But let's be honest though, there has been zero conversations to build this at Steelcase. So over the past year, one of the most reoccurring questions we get is how to actually build the Lumia. In the original tier list, the chair I built was super crude. I had removed the bottom shell of the Amia seat to make it easier to attach to the Leap frame. To start the process, you'll need to remove the seats on both the Leap and Amia chairs that you have. And we have videos for both of these processes, and while it can be a little bit tricky, once you get the seat pad off, the Leap is a bit easier to remove. With both seats off, I think it's important we talk about why the seat on the EMEA is an improvement over the Leap, if it's really worth it, and who can actually benefit from this combination. In the original tier list video, I hadn't gone too deep down the rabbit hole on why this seat pad was better. I quickly referenced that I felt like the seat pad was just a bit more thick for my tailbone, and that was it. But when you actually take the seat pans apart, it became very clear this wasn't the case. Now this shouldn't really have surprised me though, since Steelcase follows the data and research has shown that firm quality seat foam shaped with the proper waterfall front, no hard edges, provides the best blood flow in our legs and support for our body long term. Now Ryan, who's here at BTOD TV, even did a video on this in the past and showed 18 examples from five of the largest office manufacturers on the planet why they all have thin and firm seat pads. One of the most cited documents online from Cornell University that was headed up by the godfather of ergonomics, Alan Hedge, said this for their recommendation when looking at seats. Seat cushioning, recommended thickness of 1.5 to 2 inches thick. Cushions should be firmer in the back and thicker while less firm and thinner at the front. Too much cushioning can cause the body to sink into the chair, constraining movement. A soft chair may be comfortable at first, but as the body sinks, blood circulation lowers, skin temperature rises in affected areas, and compression under thighs increases. These factors combine for increased discomfort. Comparing the actual seat pads on the EMEA and LEAP, the thickness, density of the pad, and shape are almost identical. Both are thin and firm, but the actual noticeable difference comes in the shape of the seat pad shell itself. Side by side, it's clear that the Leap has a much more contoured shape than the more flat design on the EMEA. It's my belief that this contoured shape creates a sitting experience for some of us that creates some level of tailbone discomfort. Now, some have commented on Reddit and YouTube that they think that the Lumia already exists, that it's a refurbished chair from a competitor, Crandall Office, who's created a new thicker seat pad for their Leap chairs. While this seat pad may be good for some, it isn't a Lumia. From what I've seen, their pad has a much different shape, density, and thickness than the original Leap or a Mia seat pad. It also has a defined edge on the top of the cushion with no waterfall front. In my opinion, I think it goes against everything that Alan Hedge from Cornell recommends and the final steel case designs created through thousands of hours of research and development. But back to building the Lumia. With both seats off, you just need to slide the Amia seat onto the Leap. You can see that these sliding seat mechanisms are almost identical on both chairs. And at first, it didn't really seem like keeping the EMEA shell on the bottom of the seat was a great idea since it hit the hinged portion on the Leap frame, which you can see here. But with a little leverage on the front of the seat pan, it tilts up the EMEA seat pad just enough towards the back of the chair for this to slide into place. 
When you sit in the chair, this really isn't actually too noticeable unless you're the type that likes to adjust the seat depth on your chair frequently. So how do you know if you even need a Lumia or a Leap or an EMEA? For the vast majority, it comes down to how big you are, the adjustments you prefer, and the shape of the seat you prefer. On average, our return rate for both a Leap and a Mia is around 5-6%, to with no real difference between the two, and this is actually one of the lowest return rates for all of the chairs that we sell. I think that the Leap does a good job fitting both small and tall individuals. It has a backstop feature for those who like to recline, with a more pronounced lumbar that's very adjustable. The EMEA, on the other hand, is better for small users and people up to 6 foot 2 inches tall. It's a bit more basic with a tilt lock feature only and features a much less pronounced lumbar support with only height adjustment and overall a shorter back design. The LAMIA provides a more flat sitting experience with the EMEA seat and all of the leap adjustments. So for most of us, I think we'll actually be happy in a leap or an EMEA. But if you're crazy enough, you can actually sign up to our email list in the description. We're planning to build a limited number of Lamias for people to buy, and getting on that list will keep you up to date when they're available. Thanks for watching.